seems we're in a day where nobody wants to be a servant. Uh, everybody wants a title. Everybody wants to be able to say, look at me or see something they have done. And I get it, but that's the flesh. Like the brother taught on this morning again. Uh, when you start making that flesh feel good, you need to back up. You're probably doing the wrong thing. Uh, the flesh did not get saved. <clears throat> I don't care what anybody tells you. It did not get saved. As a matter of fact, it's the worst enemy you've got is your flesh. The Bible goes so far to say it's better to pluck your eye out, amen, or cut something off, whatever, that is giving you so much trouble you can't serve God. It's better to go through life maimed, amen, and make it to heaven than to be whole and wind up in hell. Uh, <clears throat> Just for the record, the real men of God in your Bible, the real giants, if you read your Bible, even Paul several times referenced himself as a servant. He did. Amen. Job, a servant of God. I mean, it goes on and on. Obadiah, if you don't know that name, look it up. A man that just happened to have his house in the right place at the right time when one of God's other servants wouldn't do things the right way, cost a man his life, Obadiah got blessed with just having the presence of God. He didn't preach and do nothing. But after he had the presence of God in his home, it changed his service. It did. Go read about him. Before it was over, you didn't hear nothing about Obadiah. God shows up at his house and then you start seeing Obadiah a bunch. Yeah, yeah. It didn't matter if he was a doorkeeper, playing music. I mean, just whatever he could do to be a servant, he realized being a servant of God kept him in a good place. Yeah. Kept him close to God. Kept him close to God's men. Yeah. And uh, I'm thankful I can just be a servant. Right. I got to studying, and, and you can go back and look at different places, and, and I'll hit a couple in just a second. Just bear with me. But I... I got to notice that every time you read about the kings, even Saul, every time they went somewhere, you know one of the first things they say, it's saying the king and his servants. Every time. David and his servants. I mean, everywhere you look in your Bible, even when you go back to the men like Job, talked about his servants that came to him to tell him the news of his family. And... Uh, uh, you go looking through your Bible at different men of the Bible and every one of them that did things, there were servants. Elijah had servants. Yeah. We know Elisha was one of the ones that was a servant. Yeah. And by being a good servant, God did twice as much for the servant yeah. as He did for the man that trained him. Right. Just makes you wonder what God would do for us wow. if we just truly serve where God puts us to serve. Yeah. And... I got to thinking about them, sir. They never got left behind. <laughs> I mean, never got left behind. Amen. Always appreciated the servants. Amen. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but sometimes not wanting to be a, a servant, you may think you're nobody, but you've got a place. You've got a plan. Amen. There's something for you to do. Amen. See, your preacher won't see everybody that you'll see. So if you're not willing to be a servant, let me tell you something, there's going to be a lot of blood on a lot of people's hands for the people we should have witnessed to that we should have been a willing servant to get them to Christ. Right, right. All of us play a part. I, I'm going to use a little reference to the Titanic. I know y'all probably heard much deeper and better things, and, but this is just the way God led me this afternoon. I'll be honest with you, this morning I was flipping through. I already had a, a thought, but you know, I get nervous every now and then. And so I started flipping through my notes. And I'm trying to put it in my iPad. <laughs> but it just, you know, I could look up Scripture twice as fast as my iPad. But I like putting my hands on my Bible. Right. Right. They laugh at me sometimes, but I say I'd rather read out of my Bible. Yeah. I use it in a crunch, but I sure like my Bible. Yeah. So I still write things down. <laughs> I still like to look at it. I don't know why I just do. But I looked at these things. You know, I'm just going to deal with about three different ships that was involved with the Titanic. And we're just talking simple tonight. And if you know I'm coming, it's going to be simple. <laughs> it's just the way God uses me. 
And uh, like I said, I think I get to thinking, I've heard Brother Doug preach several times, and I get nervous because I don't want to let Brother Doug down. Amen. But ultimately, if God's pleased, we'll be okay. If God has His way with me, guess what? It'll do what you need to get. It'll do things for this church that you need it to do. It'll move mountains, amen, if we just be a servant. So tonight, I'm just going to be a servant. Whatever God tells me to do or say, that's what we're going to do. But uh, if you looked in Joshua chapter number 7, and I'm probably going to read just a little bit here, uh, just, just to kind of set the stage, but in Joshua chapter number 7, there's some things going on right here. They go to fight Ahi in the first part of the chapter. And if you read it, and I'm not going to read it all, but children of Israel committed a trespass, verse number 1, in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Not only Achan did it, but everybody's in trouble. You may think your place is not big and you can't do much, but you can affect the whole service of the church. The Bible even says the Spirit's easily quenched. So if you're having a bad day, for goodness sakes, for God's sakes, for yourself and your church's sake, get it right before you get here. Whether you like that or not, it's a fact. Somebody be having a bad day and it'll cause problems. Hey, you know, I just read it to you. The whole camp of Israel is in trouble because of one person not willing to do what they were told to do. Boy, nobody likes to hear that, do they? I mean, we, I mean, that like just combs the hair the wrong way. When somebody says, you just need to do what you're told. Man, that just does not fit. We don't like to hear it in school. We don't like to hear it at work. We sure don't like to hear it at church. But sometimes... We just need to go back to the basics and remember, just do what you told. Joshua sent men to Ahi in verse 2, which is beside Beth Haven on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ahi and returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. You know what he's saying? We don't need everybody. We got this. Let's say that Joshua was a preacher. Man, that's a preacher. We don't need everybody for this one. No need to weary everybody. We got this. They got a little bold because of what God had been doing. Now, church, the Bible says to enter into the throne of grace boldly. But you better walk softly in everything else. It's not your power that does anything. It'll be humility that makes you a mountain of a man. It'll be humility that makes you a lady, not just a female. Amen. I say this a lot of times. Being a male doesn't make you a man. But if you're going to do great things for God, it'll start in humility. They said, oh, we got this. And they returned, told him this. And, and at verse 4, so they were thither of the people, about 3,000 men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote up to him about 30 and 6 men. And they chased them before the gate, even in the Shebarim, and smote them into going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. It's a bad thing to get beat up. If I'm going to have to fight somebody, but it's real bad when I tuck tail and run. I mean, but, hey man, yeah. I mean, then you're humbled whether you want to be or not. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Boy, it's something hard about having to tuck tail and run. Yeah. They had them on the run. What they thought was nothing. And you know why they thought that? Because they had seen God's hand do greater things with less people. Right. But this time they got less people, but God's not in it. Right. Be careful what you endeavor to do. Be certain it is God that sends you or you will fail. Amen. You will fail. They go up here and they come back. They're whooped. Joshua immediately rents his clothes. He's broken. He knows something's wrong. Basically what happened, there were some things that shouldn't have been there that was. If you go to study about the Titanic, there was at least one ship that was in the area. You know, all them people could have been saved that night on the Titanic. I know y'all know enough about that to know that. They could have been saved. 
But the first problem they made, very first, I think the whole problem they had, Brother Jordan, the whole thing is when they said even God couldn't sink the ship. You just don't do that. It was going to sink no matter what. You don't do that. Just like Joshua sending them men out. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were doing the same thing. They were basically saying, we don't, hey, we got this. Even God can't sink this ship. Didn't He make its uh, maiden voyage with its first crew? Now, it did make one run. It did. Go study it out. Did y'all realize it was even called unlucky when it left the first dock? It got out of control in the dock and almost hit another ship before it ever left. Oh, yeah. Almost hit nothing, and they named it unlucky right then. Sure did. It almost hit the New Yorker, I believe it's what they called that other ship. And, and uh, right out of the gate, 22 of the crew was missing. Sure did. 13 signed back on. But right out of the gate, they had problems. He was named unlucky. Y'all want to guess when the completed trials happened? April the 1st. And y'all going to really like this. Y'all want to know the day that I was voted into my first church? <laughs> April the 1st. I said, well, that fits pretty good. But it wasn't a joke. <laughs> Amen. So many things you start to see come together. Right. Named unlucky right out of the gate. It's supposed to be one of the greatest ships ever built. And in that area that night when they got in trouble from things again, foolish thinking, not being aware of what was going on. Not realizing just how dangerous it was going to be. Come on now. You walk every day in this life, you don't realize that you're that close to death every time you take a step. You get out here in your car, you're that close to death every time you drive. You would be amazed if it wasn't for God's angels that most of us wouldn't make it where we're going. We'd be doing funerals a lot more than we're doing them. But thank God when I got saved, he put an angel on me. Yeah. I've been in situations shouldn't have got out of it. Right. Amen. Right, right. But God saw me through. I'm the man now. I'll tell them when something's dangerous, I say, y'all back up. Let me handle this. Well, preacher, we don't want you to get hurt. I said, if there's anybody who won't, it'll be me. Y'all think I'm kidding. We raised a big truck bed just the other day with cranes. And I was taking our big mechanics bed, had a crane on and all these things. I said, step back. Let me just a minute. In shores the world. Just as the truck cleared the bed, she fell. Everybody got nervous. I said, I ain't no problem. God's all right. We're good. I said, well, nothing I did. God took care of it. I was driving down the road not long ago. My wife vouched for me. I'd gotten in a truck. We just had a bunch of work done on. It was a big, long 4,500 Dodge. I had an excavator on the back. I mean, loaded. And it was heavy. And because of the repairs, God's grace, I was taking it easy that morning, rush hour traffic down through Atlanta I got down there pretty close to uh, getting in the remnant of Atlanta the traffic was getting heavy about six lanes wide and the truck went to go to the right and when I spun the wheel she spun there wasn't nothing there and I often wondered what I'd do or how that would be let me just give you some advice you don't want to be there there was nothing I could do I mean there ain't nothing you can do and I bumped a car spun it around that car hit backwards into the wall. Rush air traffic. That's the only car hit. My truck just eased over to the inside wall. Hit the wall and stopped. Nothing got out of line. Nothing got beat up. Hey, man. My steering was so bad that the knuckle came off the steering box, Brother Doug, and both tie rod ends. When she hit the wall, the wheels went like this. Now, you tell me that God wasn't with me. Yeah. Hold an excavator. I mean, I was loaded, and God took care of me. Yeah. Even my boss, I'm trying to get back in church. Amen. I'm praying. And when I done got one, I'm on his trail. I've told him, hey, I don't make no bones about it. I said, boy, I'm on your trail. But even that day, he come down and saw as little of damage it was. Wasn't hardly nothing broke. He said, preacher, I believe it'd be a good idea if we just had a prayer. I said, you can be glad I had one before I got out here. Yeah, right. Amen. I said, I'm glad I didn't wait till trouble. I talked to God every day. Talked to him in the morning, evening, and night. I'm glad. God knows what I need even when I don't. I'm glad I wasn't cocky that day and said even God couldn't wreck this truck. But God saved me that day just like He's done many times. 
good to be a servant of God. Sure. He don't leave without me, and I don't leave without him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. One of these days, he's coming after me. Yeah. I got to call myself. That night, the Titanic got out there and got in trouble. Everything was already against it. There was a ship called the Samson within seven miles of the wreck. Seven miles. Could have been there with no trouble, had plenty of room. But they were out there illegal fishing. Sure was. They had illegal fish. It was seals. They were only seven miles away. But because of what they had on board, they tucked tail and ran, knowing they were in trouble. Sure did. Left them. There's a lot of you today that the preacher called you and asked you to do something. You'd probably veer from it. You'd probably say, Preacher, I really can't. Preacher, I'm not. And it'll be because you know there's some sin in your life that you hadn't dealt with. You're doing things in secret places. God have mercy. I'm sorry, but this is what's the way God's a push it. And you won't do things for God because there's something in your life. There's something you've done on the phone. There's something in that computer. There's some things that you need to put down on this altar that God can use you. And for the record, people will die if you don't deal with the sin in your life everybody could have been saved because of the illegal things in the vessels they weren't able to answer the call just like with Joshua people died because of the illegal sin things that shouldn't have been there people died and church is still going on today we're going to answer for that just so you know. You can enjoy that comfortable seat for now, but when the judgment comes, we ain't none of us going to be comfortable. When God said He'd wipe the tears away, you know what that means? That means we were going to be doing some crying. The judgment's going to be the worst thing in the world, Brother Doug. I dread the judgment. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven, but I dread the judgment. The things I know I should have done. Listen, I'm not walking on the water. I know me. The judgment's coming. I'm going to hear about every one I missed. You will too. That ain't just to preachers, that's to everybody. Samson wasn't able to do his job. And uh, you look at Jonah. I'm not going to go into all of it. We know the story. Jonah was called with a purpose, but he just didn't care about those people. We got a lot of people who have a real problem with forgiveness. I mean, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. I know, Brother Doug, Miss Annette, y'all can vouch for this. There's times you have to forgive people that you really just don't want to forgive. I know she, <laughs> I'm not going to mess with Miss Annette. I know them preacher's wives, and I honor the preacher's wife. Thank God I'm going to stay on good terms with the preacher's wife. I got one. <laughs> I'll be honest, you don't mess with them preacher's wife. Whew. She scares me sometimes. But I'm telling you, the Bible even goes so far to tell us that if we don't forgive, we won't get forgiveness. Right. 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 Amen. And it goes so far. Have we forgotten what the Scripture says? Love those that despitefully use us. It even goes so far somebody hits you on the cheek, turn it and tell them to have the other side too. I mean, that covers it pretty well. People do you wrong, you ought to say thank you. I appreciate that. I love you anyway. That's hard to do, but if you've got enough of God in you, you will. I believe if you could see the people, if we would not have so much illegal things going on in our lives that we could see some rescuing, it'd change the way you think. Oh, yeah. If you could see the people that would be saved, that would testify that thanks to this brother, thanks to this sister, I'm here and I'm saved. It'll boost you. It'll excite you. But we're not getting it because we won't deal with the sin. You don't know what you're missing. Right. Jonah could have had the greatest revival we read about in that Bible. If he'd just done what God said. But instead he put a whole ship in danger. One man's sin, again, because he just didn't care. He wanted forgiveness, but wasn't wanting to give it to nobody else. He was glad he was saved, but didn't care if anybody else got it. That night there was another ship called the Californian. Californian was in the area as well about 14 miles away from the wreck and just for the record all these knew the flares were going off they knew there was problems and uh, 
the radio man heard the call told the man in charge he said oh no they're not going to sing just for you and got aggravated turned the radio off turned his radio off people's out there sitting on an SOS SOS we're taking on water we're in trouble and just didn't care turned off the radio and went to bed went to bed knowing there were people dying in church when you come to church and you sit there service after service and you listen to the preacher preach to you and you know it's to you now there may be a lot of things I'll get on tonight that you don't need but I guarantee you there ain't a message crosses this pulpit that there ain't something for you and you'll come to church Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday if you get here for that and you'll pray about things and then God tries to answer your prayer by dealing with what's wrong first. Yeah, right. And because you won't listen to God, you start turning a deaf ear to Him, you've turned the radio off and you're in trouble. Right. And while you're sitting there to a deaf ear, your family's hurting, your children's going to die and go to hell if you ain't careful, your wife's are hurting, your husband's hurting, hey, it works both ways. Right. Because we don't care. We just turn the radio off. Turn the deaf ear. One of them was so bold that they went outside and saw the flares, flipped his cigarette, and went to bed. Preach, I wouldn't do that. You better answer that carefully. You got neighbors that watch you. When's the last time you went to bed and prayed for your neighbors? When's the last time you went to bed and somebody on the job crossed your mind and God gave you a burden to see that they got saved? When's the last time you was at a gas pump and saw the person across it, God? When's the last time you got in your car praying? When's the last time you left the house and said, God, I want you to use me today? That ain't just for preachers. I've often said, Brother Doug, I'm going to make every person in my church teach. Every one of them. I'll probably lose half of them before I can get them in there, but I'll get them one way or another. You know why it does you good? When you realize somebody's depending on what you got to say, you'll get real with it. You'll start studying your Bible because you'll find out right quick you don't know as much about it as you thought you did. It'd be good if everybody could preach. I know we can't do that, Brother Doug, but it'd do people good to feel the pressure. My wife said, Son, you just got to relax. You always do. I thank God for my wife. She encouraged me. That really makes me nervous. I'm thinking, well, I must be in bad shape. She's even encouraging me. No, she's good. She does. She said, you need to calm down. You always do fine. She said, you just got to... That's hard to do. Because what's in my mind is I'm thinking, who could I mess up if I don't hit it right? Who's going to be in the audience tonight that's on the verge of getting saved? Who's on the verge of doing great things for God? And if I miss it... And it bothers me. I worry. It'd do us all good if we had that. You ought to have it anyway. Yeah. You know why the churches were praising and shouting in the old days? Because they were seeking God. They were not only depending on the preacher to do something. They wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. They wanted to be in the ministry. Yeah. They wanted to be a servant. They knew that God could use him. Whether they taught, preached, or did anything, God can use you. Right. These guys just left these people dying. Amen. Dead, left them dying. I could go over several examples. I'm going to bump them, and then we're going to hit the last one. You know, Daniel, he didn't have to do a lot of things, but he sure helped a lot of people. He even encouraged the king. Sure did. That king was the first one on the scene. The next morning, he was. Is that right? He was. And I've often thought of it like this. Now, y'all just give me a little leeway. I believe the king didn't sleep no more than that. I, I believe Daniel slept like a baby, and the king was up all night. Because Daniel was in the hands of God. Now, I believe he made that a big old lion, just a big old teddy bear, and I believe he just laid down on him. That's what I believe. And that king, though, was up all night thinking, God, what have I done? Come on. 
He was thinking, what have I done? I've let people I thought I could trust mislead me. I've let people tell me to do something that I should have checked out. Come on now. Hey, he put his faith in the wrong places. He didn't have enough with God in him, but he knew a man that did. And the next day, I believe the king went out without his robe. I believe his hair was a mess. I believe he ran to that tomb. I do. I believe it. I believe he needed some relief. Amen. I mean, I've been there. I've been up all night before praying and asking God for help help for help and God show up I'm glad when the king got to the rock he said oh Daniel are you there and Daniel said oh king live forever I believe that king had a fit like he never had before I believe people said what's wrong with the king when the king was doing this saying hey hey the God of Daniel did it again he done done it again hey God's good God's faithful God can do the impossible even when we make a mistake. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hannah, and I miss you on Azariah. I don't like to just use that heathen name. It didn't used to bother me, but it does now. Amen. They go to the fire for the Lord, and Jesus showed up. You'd be surprised. That ain't just for preachers. God will meet you in your fire. God will meet you in your trial. You want to see Jesus? Go to the bat for him. Stand in the midst of the fire for him. He'll show up for you. You'll see a touch of God in your life and in any family like you never thought you'd see if you're willing to get everything else out of the way. This glass of water is a good thing. It's a good vessel. But if I want some of God in it, if I want something else, I've got to get rid of what's there first. Y'all need to dump some things out. There's one more ship, and I'm done. Give me just a minute. Whew. The preacher's trying to kill me while he's feeding me. <laughs> good gracious. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. There was one more ship. I like this ship. <laughs> Thank God when nobody else will do it. I'm glad there's always one. Yeah, right. Amen. Willing to go. Yeah. Willing to do what they really can't, but they just want to do it. You ever had people like that, huh? Yeah. I've had some in my church. They want to sing, they can't sing. <laughs> They really can't. But their hearts are good. I'll shout them on if nobody else does. I mean, somebody knows what they're singing about. I don't care if you can carry a tune in the bucket. It'll help me. I mean, they just love the Lord and want to do whatever they can. The Carpathia was the last ship. Now get this. You had one ship <laughs> that wasn't but about seven miles. You had another ship that was 14 miles. And neither one of them was able to do what needed to be done. But there was another ship, the Carpathia. He was 58 miles away. 58 miles away. And the captain of the Carpathia, <laughs> he went around the ship and said, turn everything off. Turn off the hot water heaters. He said, the only heat I want on on the ship is the, 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 the kitchen slash fellowship, if you will, area. I don't know what you call it on a boat. He said, all I want heat there for the passengers. He said, but I want all the staterooms. I want all the heat for the kitchen. I want everything cut off. They said, what do you plan to do? Well, that ship was said that it could only go about 14 knots at best. Well, that captain said, turn everything off. Turn it all to the boiler room. Put it all on the engines. Give her all she's got. Now the same water that's sinking the Titanic and the same water that sin has stopped two other vessels, this captain says, put it all feet ahead. They wound up getting 17 knots out of a 14-knot ship. And that captain looked over. Now, this is a second-hand mate uh, uh, telling us what the captain did that night. The, the second mate is standing there at the wheel, and the captain looks over at him and says, full steam ahead to the coordinates of that Titanic. And that second mate said, buddy, we had her in the wind. said, we was cutting the waves. And he said, I'm all thinking, all, there, all he could think about was the icebergs. Already got one ship going down. And he thought, oh, God, what are we going to do? The captain's got us full steam ahead. 
head. But he looked over at the captain, and the captain had his head down and was praying to the captain, praying to the God, praying to the one, praying to the power, praying to the one that could get him through. Thanks be to God. I've got a God that can do the impossible, that can get me there, that can save souls, that can do with me what nobody else can. I'm a 14 knot preacher, but with God I can do 17. I said I could. (laughs) They said they put that thing in the wind. They said that ship should have blown up, but he had her on the floor. How many Sundays said they had that thing stretched? Didn't even hit a piece of ice. Said that joker sailed straight. Said to the wee hours of the morning. Got there and started picking up people. But they were too late. A bunch of people done die. But thank God they did say something. Amen. Amen. What I understand. They saved about 705 people. Thank God for somebody that didn't have illegal goods on the vessel. Amen. That cared. That cared enough to trust in God. To do what they couldn't do. And to let God do with them what they shouldn't have been able to have done. Amen. For somebody that was willing to go. John Baptist got his head cut off. But I believe for the knife ever hit his head just like Stephen being stoned. I don't believe he felt a stone. I believe he looked up, saw Jesus. He prayed for them sorry wrestlers that hated him and God took him out. I believe that Carpathia, (laughs) if they'd have had the modern technology, I believe God stuck his finger down there on the propeller. Huh? I believe God had his hand. He must have been... (laughs) Oh, Lord, could you imagine if you could have seen the angels that night? Just maybe there was a whole crew of angels uh, holding to the sides of that ship, flopping and saying, go, baby, go. Uh, I mean, they, God will help you. And you'll have more power than you've ever had when you'll surrender to the will of God, when you'll get the sin out of your life, when you just do what he asks you to do. Quit questioning. Quit wondering how. And let God do the impossible. We need servants that'll just say, God, here am I. Use me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You hear preachers tell stories. And you say, I want that. Comes at a price. I guarantee that captain, while them other captains, by the way, got in trouble. And there were other vessels. Ain't got time to get into that. There were other ships. They all paid for their uncaring and no willingness not only did people die, but they paid for it. Yeah. They paid for it. But let me tell you, old Carpathia, son, they put him on the, on the scene and said, there's the man. Huh? There's the man that cared enough to get us out of this. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Brother Doug and me, we ain't much. And I've told Brother Doug, I'm here, use me. I believe God's going to let us do some great things. I do. I believe we're going to do things overseas. Amen. I believe we're going to do things everywhere. I've got buses from here to Mexico. Got one overseas. I was, I guarantee you, I'm your bus man. People call me, give me buses to each church and say, well, we didn't want those kids. I'd grab the title and get out of there before I said more than I needed to. Yeah. What'd you do with that bus? I'd give it to the next church you called. Yeah. Hey, I want to see them come in. Yeah. I want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be the one that is scared to death and my knees are shaking and I don't know what we're going to do but all I know to do is give it all I got and let God plow the path and when it's all said and done I'll say thanks be to God. When people call me I got my buddies and work with me. They call me the man. (laughs) Had it on my credit card. Will the man Jackson. Just because I fix all their messes and junk. And I started telling them that God condemned me. Let me tell you something. I'm nothing. So every time they start saying that stuff, you know, I tell them, I say, hey, boys, as humble as I know how, I can't take credit for what God put in me. I said, Sue, I appreciate it, but y'all just thank the God of heaven that made me what I am. Don't you want to be all you can be? Don't you want to be that one? That being, Brother Doug, tell me the truth. 
ain't nothing like sitting on a pew and people go to testify. And somebody said, thank you, preacher, for telling me what I needed to hear. Ain't nothing like it. That happens to everybody. That can happen to you, you young people. Listen to me. You bring your buddies and all from school. That can be you. One of your classmates might even be suicidal and you don't know it. That 14-year-old shot up to school. A year earlier was in school with my boy. Someone said, that was luck. No, that was God. They told God to stay out, but I sent him back in. I'm glad I got a God that does what I can't do. You don't know how bad you're going to need him before the sun comes up, preacher. You'll be coming. Let me tell you something. Don't play with God. Why would you want to play with the one that can make you do more than you've ever done? The key to revival in the church is seeing people get saved and get healed. You want revival? Get them in here. You want revival? Pray for revival. You want to be used to God? Pray. Don't look at what you can't do, but trust God for what you can do. Go ahead, preacher. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.